Hi, this is Peter. Welcome to Beyond the Cane Pole. Um, out here by the pond on the bench. Uh, not doing any fishing, just wanted to talk to y'all about something that I discussed a little bit with somebody on YouTube and I figured I'd throw it out there um, full-fledged and my opinion on it. Um, when I make up a kit, it doesn't matter if it's a fishing kit, it doesn't matter if it's my EDC kit, it doesn't matter if it's emergency kits, which I haven't even covered with you guys. Um, it, it's, it doesn't matter what kit it is. I think of what I'm planning on doing, what the kit is for, and what my personal needs and skill levels are for what I need to carry. Um, the same equipment that I would carry here out to my own backyard, I'm not going to carry. I, I, I might carry some of that, but I'm going to carry more if I go out to the club to go fishing. I'm going to carry even more stuff if I go out and go camping. Um, not that I do a whole lot, uh, not that I do this anymore, but if I was going camping without um, being in a campground, like you know, floating down the river or something, I would carry even more um, because of the type of situation, what I'm doing, what I would expect to encounter. Um, that is the same type of mentality I use for every kit I make. Um, you can't cover all the bases. You, there, there's no way sometimes you can cover every single little potential possibility. Um, you need to look at what you're going to most likely run into, run across. Um, for example, and, and we'll go into the prepper world a little bit if, if, we want, if we want to, I concern myself with potential natural disasters. Hurricanes are a big thing here. Sometimes in the winter, um, we have a slight little ice storm or some snow or something, and that shuts things down here. I know everybody laughs at the South because of that, but it's what happens here because it doesn't happen here all the time. I concern myself with that. Um, I do concern myself with potential man-made disasters, a train wreck carrying some chemicals or something like that. Um, I, it concerns me. I don't go out there and go crazy and get concerned with, uh, you know, nuclear attack or, you know, something like that because I live close to an Air Force base, I live close to a naval base, um, we're talking 30 miles to either one, maybe a little bit more, um, then you go up towards Columbia, you've got an Army base and an Air Force base up there in that general area. Uh, you know, if, if we get bombed nuclear-wise, fallout, I'd prefer to just die in the bomb than I would, you know, radiation poisoning weeks on end. Um, and I'm not going to stretch that one out. I know that sounds bad, but, you know, I'm not going to concern myself with that. That's something I've lived with all my life. Um, we knew, you know, even back when we had um, bomb drills, you knew you were going to fry. It was just in part of the course. At any rate, I just wanted to throw a little mentality out there of how I, you know, plan and how I prepare. My EDC kit, and I mentioned this, is also could serve as an emergency kit. The poncho, which I carry for rain, can be used as a tarp. Anytime I carry a lighter, which I carry one in my pocket, I could start a fire with it. Um, I also have a way of purifying water. My top priorities for the area where I live is making sure I stay hydrated um, in the summer making sure I stay in the shade in the cool and in the winter making sure I kind of stay dry and out the wind if possible um, there's a lot to be said though for a, a night that's not raining just going and you know putting your back against a tree um, a group of trees some wax myrtle bushes. Wax myrtles are real good because it's real thick and it always stays green. Get yourself into the wax myrtle bushes. Start your little fire for warmth and you can survive a cool to cold winter night here with what temperatures we get without ever throwing up a tarp over your head, without ever doing anything more than just having that fire and propping yourself up in front of it. Um, doesn't mean you shouldn't put a cover over if you can. Doesn't mean it's not going to rain. Just saying that that's the kind of thing I would have to worry about. As far as I'm concerned, my biggest thing with that is making sure somebody knows where I am and knows when I should be back. 
I don't consider myself more than about a day to a day and a half with somebody showing up to help me out. Just, I've got friends, got family, got a wife. Um, if the wife and I are out, you know, we can call somebody with a cell phone or somebody will start missing us. We have daughters and you know, somebody will start missing us. Somebody knows where we are. Um, now, that's not the same as if I was hiking in the mountains on the Atlanta uh, on the Appalachian Trail or, you know, out in the desert somewhere or something like that where I might be days before somebody can find me or get to me. It's just not what I'm going to deal with. Um, it all depends on what your situation is, where you're at, um, what your skill level is, um, and what you're comfortable with. Uh, for instance, I can start a fire with a bow drill. I can start a fire flint and steel. I've done it. You know what? Technology allows me to carry a cigarette lighter. Technology allows me to carry a ferro rod. And I carry a magnifying lens. Y'all seen it? Um, just magnifying lens is more fun. Um, if I was going to have to be out long term, I would definitely be using the magnifying lens as much as possible because it doesn't use anything but the sunlight. Um, there again, like I say, a flick a bit and start a fire. Um, to me, my most important things are keeping hydrated, having a fire going so I can purify that water, and so I can keep myself warm. Um, shelter overhead is the next priority to keep some shade, to keep some um, rain off, stuff like that. That's just you know, my, my, my viewpoints when I'm making a kit. Everybody else's berries. Um, I also travel knife heavy. I like knives as a cutting tool. I'm not big on saws in the woods. Um, you saw my camping video. Uh, you saw what I do with long, long logs. Um, just, you know, tailor your kit, and I've gotten way off course. Tailor your kit to your personal needs, to your area, and what you will be doing, what your skill level is for you. You can get ideas from somebody, but in at the end of the day, you need to have things you're confident with, have things you can use, have things you're comfortable with at your level. Um, that's just how it goes. I just wanted to put that out there. I um, wanted to make sure that everybody understands that you know, I, I, I make a kit for me. My kit may not work for you. Um, by, by all means, take ideas off of it. Try it. Um, don't ever rely on a kit or kit items you have never tried. That being said, I have some canteen cups um, with canteens with my water in my emergency kit. Um, you can set them over fire, boil water, all like that, that have never been used. That does not mean that I have never used items like it. I've never used one of those. What that means is I don't use that one. I have a Mora knife in both of our emergency kits in our vehicles that have never been used. I've sharpened them, I've oiled them, I check on them ever so often to make sure they're not rusting, and that's it. Don't use them. I've got other knives I use every day. Those are emergency use only. They're there for when I need them. I know they'll work. I've used, I've got a Mora knife, the one on my EDC kit is a Mora knife I've used quite a bit. So I know more knives work. I don't see the need in using every one. Um, and that's what I mean when I say use your items in your kit. You don't necessarily have to use the items that you pack away for your emergencies if you have confidence in it and have used it otherwise. Um, just make sure you know what you're carrying. Make sure it's useful. Make sure you know how to use it. And in some cases, make sure you're not carrying five or six things that does the same job that you don't need. Um, I know folks who carry a tarp, carry a poncho with, with grommets, they carry a small tent, they carry, you know, and this is just everyday carry. Um, and, and the list goes on. You know, they've got, you know, emergency um, space blankets, they've got, you know, um, drop cloths, plastic drop cloths, you know, and they say, well, I'll be able to build a shelter with anything. Yeah, you will. This is your EDC. This is your, in case I get stuck out overnight, 
um, why are you carrying so much stuff? That's another concern. Don't over carry. There is a two is one, one is none mentality in things. That is true. But, here's the caveat to it. If you have a backpack base camp where you've got all your you know, knives and stuff with you, um, you know, maybe carry a pocket knife. Maybe in your EDC kit, carry a, a spare knife. Um, that is enough. You don't have to have five or six knives. You don't have to have five or six ways to start a fire if you've got two very good, two to three very good ways, and they don't all have to be in the same kit. Um, you don't need, you know, a tarp, a poncho, a uh, emergency blanket, a uh, drop cloth, uh, you know, you know, all for you know, putting a roof over your head if it's just a, a one day thing. Now, don't don't get me wrong, carry that stuff in your emergency kit, okay? And, and by emergency kit, maybe most people would think of them as a bug out bag or get home bag. Um, I don't think of them that way. I'm not ever gonna be able to walk home. Um, it's just a fat man <laughs> sleep at that. But, you know, you can carry that stuff. You just don't need that stuff on you in an EDC kit. You don't need that stuff in case of an emergency overnight. Carry you just enough to get you through the night, maybe get you through two nights. Unless, of course, you are back country and what you have with you is all you will ever have and it will be weak before anybody finds you. you know, there again, I'm talking about South Carolina. <laughs> um, warm usually warm all year long. Here it is October. I'm shorts and a t-shirt. Um, so, you know, take my word for it as, as what it is. Prepare your kits for your area, for what you're doing, for your skill level. And that includes fishing. Um, if your skill level involves baits, don't be carrying, you know, live bait, don't be carrying lures, a whole bunch of lures. Um, don't rely on something you don't trust and you have, don't use. Um, by the same token, I have some. I sometimes carry something that I'm not familiar with, I've not used, just to try it. But I will go back to standard items. Um, I have both beetle spins and um, and um, inline spinners in my um, in, in my um, fishing kit with the with the spinning rods. I don't use inline spinners much, but I'm giving them a go. Um, you know. All right, I've rambled, I've said my piece, I've probably repeated myself. Uh, thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed it, and there will be more videos soon. I have an upcoming announcement. I just, I shot the video last week, and it didn't turn out good at all, so I have to reshoot it, but I don't want to do it necessarily in my backyard. I may end up having to. All right, y'all have a good one.